This is Frank Denzer, one of the cogs in Germany's energy revolution. The ways in which Germany gets its power is on the cusp of a huge change. And their recent announcement to unplug all nuclear power stations is creating a number of far-reaching consequences. On the plus side, Europe's leading economy could produce about 80% of its total energy supply from renewable resources by 2015. And that's where the problems start. The current high-voltage transmissions don't have the capacity to transport the wind energy from northern to southern Germany. Frank and Karl's job is to modernise the grids with upgraded cables, which involves a lot of travel, especially when nature plays its part. Yeah, you get around a lot. I've already worked in Ireland. And when Lothar, this huge devastating thunderstorm, hit France, we rushed in as well. The pylons were broken down like matches. My colleague Karl's got some experience in Italy. They have other transmission lines in Italy, 18 millimeter thick steel cables. Just imagine the weight. You can't get giddy or afraid, of course. You have to pay attention up there and think about how to move, where to put your feet. You've got to be in good physical shape. In this job, there's no need for a gym. The pylons keep you fit. I suppose it's almost like mountain climbing. Here, at the offshore site, the second chapter of Germany's energy revolution is written. As the grid connections are being prepared for the enormous wind farms which will soon be constructed, the problem begins. Switching Germany's nuclear share into renewable has its price. Just taking the necessary cost for upgrading the grid system on land and offshore to accommodate wind energy means a 12 billion euro bill over the next decade. At the moment, when there's too much wind energy generated, part of the turbine is shut down. This is because the transmission line simply can't cope with the colossal amount of wind that's being produced. Our next destination is Braweiler, near Cologne, where one of Germany's main grid control centres can be found. After Germany's decision to unplug all nuclear power plants, the transmission system's operators blew the whistle. Right now, Germany is much more dependent on electricity imports compared to the recent past. We consider this a problem because during the summer it can be quite common for neighbouring countries to produce less electricity to sell to Germany. It can also be very critical in winter if there are very low temperatures. France doesn't have any surplus electricity left to offer abroad. In the worst case scenario this could lead to problems in the transmission grids resulting in regional power cuts. To avoid these blackouts, the government has been putting pressure on transmission companies to speed up the upgrading of north-south power links. Now let's stop at Rasfeld, close to the Dutch border. The energy revolution and remodelling of the transmission grid will take years. And the massive construction plans have been criticised by many who live nearby. All over Germany, local protesters have been opposing the overhead lines and pylons. I don't want to live next to a high-tension line that towers 60 metres above me and transports 380,000 volts. I'm scared about the health risks which could be caused through electromagnetic radiation and electrical fields. There are health risks like sleep disorders, a higher chance of having a heart attack and an elevated leukaemia risk for children. I think it would be a good solution to move all the high voltage from overhead lines to underground cabling. I think the entire 200 kilometer grid path should be put underground. But unfortunately for residents, underground cabling costs up to 10 times as much as overhead, a fact the grid companies aren't likely to ignore. Let's move to Essen now, where RWE, one of the energy revolution's losers, has its headquarters. The government initiative to stop all its nuclear power plants by 2022 has put big energy supplies in an awkward position. 
The German economy needs huge internal investments. The Institute der Deutschen Wirtschaft Research Institute calculated that the remodeling of Germany's energy supply mix will cost 55 billion euros. The nuclear power plant companies will have to accept some losses. Altogether, this means we can expect several billion euros worth of damage. German politicians such as the regional government's European Affairs Minister are pushing for a rethink of the European energy policy, starting with the modification of the Euratom Treaty. We want the Euratom Treaty to be changed. The impact of the nucleus and the key aspect of the treaty should start by reallocating the Euratom research budget away from exclusively dealing with nuclear energy research. It should move more towards research into renewable energy, energy efficiency and energy saving research. Three decades ago, Germany's energy revolution hit Kalkar. The inner compound of the nuclear power plant takes us to the reactor's heart that never started beating. It was designed as a fast-breeding reactor to produce plutonium, but anti-nuclear protests convinced decision-makers to abandon the project. But the 4 billion euros of taxpayers' money wasn't completely wasted. A Dutch entrepreneur transformed Germany's most famous investment ruin into a leisure park and called it Funderland. And now its manager wants to invest 10 million euros into Germany's energy revolution. We've got plans with renewable energy sources too. We've shown the contrast between old-fashioned nuclear power versus renewable energies being part of the future. We've made a proposal to the local energy supplier and the local authorities to let us build wind turbines. There's potential to install biogas power plants and with lots of big surfaces on roofs, we can generate solar power. But looking downwards from the big wheel, we can see another spanner in the works, coal. All over Germany, huge coal-burning power plants are being built, and that means a lot of CO2 output. The companies in charge of this project in northern Germany are arguing that these plants are less dirty than the old ones. But CO2 output is skyrocketing compared to renewable energy sources. In the small Swiss city of Loffenberg are the headquarters of Slüschliwerk, a renewable pump storage power station. And half an hour's drive later, a tunnel, close to the public, leads into the Black Forest Mountains. Here, we hope to get some answers to another big problem linked to Germany's energy revolution, the crucial lack of power storage. These underground machines are 600 metres below an artificial hilltop lake where wind and solar energy is transformed into standby hydraulic power. Here at Atdorf, we're planning to construct the biggest pumped storage power station in Germany. With this, we can store power generated by solar and wind energy, which both deliver very unstable amounts of electricity, depending on the weather. Pumped storage power stations guarantee a stable and secure energy supply. The principle is easy enough. When energy consumption rises, water is channeled downhill to produce electricity. When demand is low, surplus electricity is used to refill the storage lake uphill. In the long run, renewable energy sources mean lower prices and less CO2 emissions. In the short term, people in Germany and neighbouring countries will have to pay higher prices for energy. The prices for electricity will rise slightly. The demand for power storage capacities will also rise, not only in Germany but also in Norway and in Alpine countries such as Austria and Switzerland, where electricity exchanges between these countries will grow. Switzerland's decision to pull out of nuclear means their power stations will soon be a thing of the past. In order to succeed, the energy revolution has to tackle the triple I challenge – invention, investment and innovation. <laughs>